God's work is a righteous work, so we should trust in him, right? The last things that we should do is question him. We certainly shouldn't doubt him and we most definitely should not get angry and upset with him, right? Let's take a look at that in our Sunday school lesson this week. Hello there, thanks for joining me for another Sunday School lesson this week. Our Sunday School lesson this week is titled, Jonah is Angry with God. Coming from the selected scripture from the fourth chapter of Jonah, starting at the first verse, and we're going to go down through the 11th verse. Again, I thank you for joining me this week. If you aren't already subscribed to the New Found Faith channel, go ahead, make sure that you subscribe now. Make sure that you like this week's lesson and then share this week's lesson with somebody somewhere. So our lesson this week, we're going to see where Jonah's anger and his disdain for the people of Nineveh, it rises to the surface again. And then we are going to see where Jonah, he turns his anger to the Lord. Have you ever been mad at God for God doing something for, for God moving as he chooses to move? Have you ever been angry about that? That's what we're going to take a look at here in our Sunday school lesson this week and whether or not that is right or wrong for us to do. So our lesson, it opens up there in the first verse with Jonah again, becoming angry. Why is it that Jonah is angry? Well, let's remember our Sunday school lesson from, from last week. In our Sunday school lesson last week, we saw where Jonah, where he actually finally went to Nineveh and he began to preach to Nineveh. He began to preach to the Assyrians, the Ninevites, the people that were in Nineveh. We have to remember that, that Jonah, he was not a fan of the people in Nineveh because again, the Assyrians, they were the ones that conquered the Northern Kingdom. They conquered Israel. And so Jonah, he was likely harmed. And if he was not harmed, he most definitely knew someone who was harmed or hurt or maybe even killed. It could have been family or friends who were killed by the people who lived in Nineveh by the Assyrians. And so Jonah, he had no desire to go and preach to the people in, in Nineveh. In fact, we saw where Jonah, where he tried to flee, where he tried to run away from, from his assignment. And so he has gone to Nineveh. He has preached against, against Nineveh. And we saw where the people, they didn't choose to continue to, to live in sin. That's what we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week. We saw where the people, they believed God. And then they turned away from their sin and they repented and God, he relented. He turned away from bringing disaster upon the people of Nineveh. And so Jonah, we see him here where he is upset. We'll see there in the second verse that, that in this anger, in the fact that the people have, have turned to the Lord, in the fact that God has relented from bringing disaster upon the people of Nineveh, we'll see there that Jonah, he prays. And he says to the Lord, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country. For I know that you are a gracious and a merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness. Jonah is saying, I know how you are, Lord. I know exactly how you are. He says there, one who relents from, from doing harm. Think about why Jonah is saying this in his prayer. Why is he talking about, again, looking there, why is he saying there, what's not this what I said? Is Jonah upset that, again, the people, that they turned to God? Is Jonah upset because, again, God chose not to move against Nineveh? What does that say about Jonah? Again, we, we start to see this darkness of Jonah that was, that was in his soul, where, again, it is rising up to the surface. Because what it sounds like here is that Jonah did not want the people of Nineveh to turn to God. What it sounds like here is that Jonah did not want the people of Nineveh to believe in God. What it sounds like here is that Jonah desired for God to move against the people of Nineveh. It sounds like Jonah desired that the Lord would actually bring disaster upon the people of Nineveh. Does that sound like something that, that a servant of the Lord or a child of God should ever wish for God to move upon people? Does that sound like something that, that we as a child of God, we who are supposed to be Christians today, 
Should we want God to bring disaster upon people? I want you to think about that for, for a moment here. So we'll see there as Jonah, he continued to pray there in the third verse. We'll see that he goes so far as asking the Lord to take his life. This is how angry that Jonah was. Because again, Jonah did desire for the people of Nineveh to be destroyed. Because the people of Nineveh, they were his enemies. They hurt him. They hurt his loved ones. And they, again, likely killed people that he knew. And so Jonah, he approached the people of Nineveh with this mindset of, I want them to pay for what they did. I don't want them to have mercy. I don't want them to be forgiven. I don't want them to be saved. Is that the right way for a child of God to think? Because somebody has used us, because somebody hates us, because somebody moves against us, should we want them to be destroyed? If they have an opportunity at receiving mercy from the Lord, should we want to take that opportunity away from them? Again, think on that as we continue along here. Okay, well, Jonah's saying that he wished for the Lord to take his life there. Well, Jonah is saying there that it would be better for him to die than to live because the people of Nineveh were shown mercy there. We see a Jonah who was in serious need of help, right? He is in serious need of help. And so we'll see where the Lord asked Jonah there, is it right for you to be angry? Is it right? Is what God asked. Is it right? Is it okay for you to be angry? You know, a lot of times we would say, well, you know, anger is just a part of, of who we are. It's in our nature. So surely we're going to have moments where we get upset, where we get frustrated, where, where we get angry. Is it right? Many of us would say, well, yeah, we, it, it is okay for us to be upset. It is okay for us to be angry. But is it right for us to move in that anger? Think hard on that, especially as a child of God. Are we supposed to move out of anger? And if so, can anger produce the fruits of the Spirit? Can it produce good fruit? Again, is it okay? Is it right? for you to be angry. So let's note that Jonah, he doesn't answer there in the fifth verse, does he? Rather than answering the Lord, because again, God had asked him, hey, is it right for you to be angry? Jonah, he was standing there in the midst, watching the people, angry, upset in his heart, walks out of the city, makes a shelter, sits down, and he's watching to see what will become of the city. Again, almost, it seems like wishing and hoping that disaster still comes upon them. Maybe thinking in his mind, well, these people, they don't, they aren't serious about what they're doing. Surely they're going to turn away and, and God will bring disaster upon them. Still wishing for disaster to come upon the people. Jonah, he's in a very dark place, isn't he? Because again, that's not the way that we as servants of the Lord, we as his children, that's not the way we should operate, right? You've heard me preach about this time and time and time again, and I preached about it last week as well. We have a law of liberty and love that we should live by. Jonah, he knew the way of God. He knew that love was supposed to be the way. And once again, we see where Jonah is fleeing from the command of love, the command of loving a neighbor. Even if that neighbor is your enemy, you're supposed to love them. Here Jonah is leaving the city. He could have just stayed in the city and rejoiced with the people, but he left the city to see what would become of the city there. And so as he sat there, we'll see that God, he made a plant. That's what we're told there in the sixth verse. This plant, again, being made by God, it comes up out of nowhere. And we're told that it rises up to add shade for Jonah uh, as, again, he made a shelter, but it wasn't, an, it wasn't enough. And so God, he makes this plant to act again as more uh, shelter, more shade for, for Jonah. What I do want to note there from that six verse is that Jonah, it seems that he's very grateful about this, this added uh, shade, this added shelter uh, that, that he has, because again, his shelter 
it was not enough. And so we'll see that as morning done, we're told there that God, he prepared a worm that damaged the plant and caused it to wither, to wither away. So again, this is a divine work because let me tell you something. I, I, I've planted beans and, and, and things like that in the garden and it takes times for, for that stuff to, to grow. And so for a plant to, to grow big enough to act as shade for Jonah and then to wither away overnight as the morning was coming up, that certainly was a divine work. Nothing that Jonah did there. There was nothing that Jonah did for that plant to rise up. The plant wasn't even there uh, when he made his shelter. So this is going to become another teaching moment, another learning moment uh, for, for Jonah here. So when the sun rose, we're told there in the eighth verse that God, he stirred up a, a great wind that caused the sun to again beat down this time really hard on Jonah to the point that scripture tells us that he began to grow weak, that he began to, to faint. And again, we'll see there in that verse that Jonah, he wishes to die again. What is going on with Jonah here? He's in a very dark place. He is so troubled what we see there in that eight verse. And so God, again, the Lord asked him there, is it right for you to be angry? This time the Lord asked, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And Jonah, look at his response there. Jonah says, it is right. It is right for me to, to be angry, even to death. Jonah, you're mad about a plant that grew up out of, out of nowhere and withered away. God, he's showing Jonah here the foolishness of anger. Anger, yes, it's natural for us to get to get upset, to get frustrated. It's, it's natural in that it has become a part of our nature. God did not create us to be angry beings, to, to be bitter, to be bitter beings. Anger is part of, of the flesh, the law that, that is according to the flesh. Anger is, is part of the evil and the wicked way of, of Satan. And, and it's part of sin, which again, it corrupts us, it corrupts our soul, which is why scripture often tells us that we need to turn away from anger, which is scripture often tells us that we don't need to let the sun set on our anger. We, yes, we're going to get upset. Yes, we're going to get frustrated, but we must work through it. We don't want anger to dwell in us because when, when anger dwells in us, it gets us to think in the way that Jonah is thinking of here. And, and again, that is a corrupt way of thinking because we as a child of God, we're supposed to be lights in this world. We are supposed to be adding to the darkness that's in this world, okay? So again, we have to keep our anger in check and the best way that we can do that is again, by turning to the Lord. It is not right for us to be angry. And again, it's certainly not right for us to move in that anger because we cannot bear any good fruit if we move from that place of anger. So God tells Jonah there in the 10th verse, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored nor made it grow. God, he's essentially telling Jonah there in that 10th verse that you're being angry, not against this plant because this plant, it wasn't even there. God is essentially making it clear to Jonah, I made that plant. I caused that plant to rise up. I caused that plant to, to wither away as well. So you're not angry at the plant. In actuality, you're angry with me. And, and again, he's pointing out how unhealthy it is for, for Jonah here to, to be angry at, at, at the Lord. Should we, should we get upset with how God moves? Again, God, he is righteous. And again, it's definitely part of our nature, but when God moves, he's moving with a purpose. And, and when things upset us, we need to remember that God, his thoughts towards us, they are not evil. They are of a future peace and hope. God is moving and all things work together for good for all of us who love the Lord. We must trust in him. That's what we must learn to do rather than to being upset with the Lord, rather than being upset with how he, he's working and how he is moving. 
there is a plan. There is always a plan. There is a divine plan. And we must trust in God's way. We must trust in his will. So God, he asked Jonah there in the 11th verse, should, should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and in their left? Should I not, should I not pity Nineveh? It, it, the Lord essentially is asking Jonah, should I not do for them what I have done for you? Think about this. First, it was it was the plant, right? That plant that came out of nowhere. It provided shade, shelter, and rest for Jonah. And, and God is essentially asking Jonah, should I not provide shade, shelter, and rest for a people who has turned to me? Think about this as well, right? Jonah, he got in that boat trying to flee and to run to Tarshish, running from his assignment. God, he showed Jonah mercy, right? God, he did not bring disaster upon Jonah, did he? He, he showed him mercy. And the Lord is essentially asking Jonah here, well, should I not, should I not do the same for the people in Nineveh? Should I not show them mercy? What do you think? If God blesses you, do you think that God shouldn't bless somebody else? What do you think? If, if God shows you mercy, should he not so show somebody else mercy? Should he not show your family, your friends and your acquaintances? Should he not show them mercy? Should he not show mercy upon those who you would consider to be your enemy? There are many people that think that way today, right? God, he has saved us from sin, right? He has forgiven us and he has saved us from sin. Should he not do that for everybody else? Is it okay for us to be so selfish to want God to only do for us and to do for nobody else? That's what God is asking Jonah here. And, and when you think about that, when you think about what that sounds like, of course that does not sound right. Because God, he tells us exactly who he is and his nature. God tells us that he is love. God tells us that he is faithful. God tells us that he is merciful. God, when he created man, he created mankind to flourish, to be fruitful and to multiply, not just one person. So if God only moved for, for one person, if he only moved for one people, it would defy everything that he has said about himself. He would not be faithful to himself. We should hope and desire that God would be faithful to himself, that he will be faithful to keep his word. So Jonah being angry about God moving and God being faithful to himself was most definitely in the wrong. He was wrong about being angry about how the Lord moved. We are wrong when we get angry with God for simply being faithful. God, he, he again, he is faithful to his word. And so we have to, this is why I love Jonah's story because a lot of times when, when we see servants in scripture, their story comes off almost seeming too perfect, right? It seems like they're always just moving, 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 moving by faith. But Jonah, he shows us the struggle. He shows us the, the difficulty in moving by faith because it's not always easy for us to, to move by obedience. There are a lot of there are a lot of people that, that we don't want to minister to, but we can't be that way, right? Because again, we are supposed to love everybody. So Jonah, he shows us a, a, a great struggle here. And this is where Jonah's story actually comes to an end. It ends on that note. And so many of us, we may be, begin to wonder, well, what became of Jonah? Because, you know, from, from everything that we've seen in our lessons so far, we don't have a, a Jonah is not standing in the best light, is he? But, but something that I, I do want to mention here, when you know we think about what became of Jonah, Jonah is the one that tells us the story. Jonah is the author of his book. So what do you think became of Jonah? He's not destroyed. He tells us this story for a reason. The reason why he tells us this story is because he learned what he was doing. He learned that it's not good to, to move in such anger. And he's sharing this story with us so that we don't move with anger as well. 
Jonah, he learned the lesson. Guess what? We must learn the lesson today as well. If you have anger and bitterness inside of you, if you have that kind of darkness inside of you, get rid of it now. There are many people that need to hear that today because we cannot bear good fruit if we have that inside of us. Some of us will say, well, the people of Nineveh, they will show mercy, but that wasn't necessarily by Jonah's hand again. That was God moving. God made that possible, okay? So we, again, we have to let go of our anger today if we desire to move forward, all right? So that is our Sunday School lesson this week. I hope that you enjoyed this week's lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with somebody somewhere. Again, if you aren't already subscribed, if you aren't already following the New Found Faith channel, make sure you go ahead and do that right here, right now. If you've missed any of the Sunday School lessons this fall quarter, you should see the links on screen now. Go ahead, make sure you can click the fall quarter uh, Sunday School lessons so that you can catch up with us. Uh, if you missed any Sunday School lessons throughout this year or any other year, you can also check those links as well. Check out those videos. See, learn, grow in your faith.